I'm pretty sure every one of us had a situation like this. We have a stakeholder who drives you crazy and makes your life really hard on a daily basis. For example, your boss or project owners or some technical expert in the company who doesn't want to cooperate with you. Maybe they drive your project into a different direction without consulting you. Or you have a boss who wants you to do everything as soon as possible without ever considering your workload. Or your project owners question your estimates and want to have a report on every hour that you spend on the project. In all these cases, you don't have direct control over these stakeholders. So what can you do as a project manager to make your life easier? Ideally, as a great project manager, you should always try to find a mutually beneficial relationships with such stakeholders. And I know it sounds easy and most probably you did everything you could already. But in any case, let me share five tips from my practical experience that may help you in this situation of dealing with difficult stakeholders. Number one, accept your role and identify the stakeholder's role. So let's think about it. From one side, you have the ultimate responsibility for the project's success. From the other side, you have stakeholders who have authority, expertise, and so on. And they demand something from you so that you implement it in your project. And at this point, it's not clear whether you should do what stakeholders ask you as is or whether you should use your judgment to drive the project to its goal. So first of all, in this case, you should accept your role. You are a project manager. And yes, you need to drive the project to its goal. And in this case, it means that you do need to collect all these requirements because you can't judge them and say that they are not supporting this goal. Instead, you capture all these requirements from different stakeholders, even if they sound like a demand or a threat and you capture them as requirements. Then you go to your project owners and show it to them. Let them prioritize this work. The key here is to clearly communicate that it's an additional scope of work. It will require more time, more budget, and you will have to plan it in into this project. And likewise, it's important that when you capture these requirements from these difficult stakeholders, you explain them the process, that you will go to the project owners and ask them whether it's a good idea to include this scope into this current ongoing project. So this way you don't miss any opportunities that subject matter experts can provide you with their demands. Maybe they are truly good ideas. On the other hand, you put the responsibility on prioritizing and including this work on the project owners. And you, as a great project manager, will try to fit it in into the project and you will try to integrate it with the work that you already promised to deliver. Tip number two, reach out one-on-one -on -one to resolve the conflict. In all these cases with dealing with difficult stakeholders, you need to understand that it's nothing else than a conflict and you need to treat it as a conflict. And the first step in any conflict resolution is to find the root cause of the problem. And believe me, in most cases, it's not the personal dislike towards you. Most probably, these stakeholders have a different agenda and they pursue their personal goals through your project. And they don't know a better way than to enforce their requirements on you. And by understanding this, you can disarm their aggressiveness by showing your willingness to help them achieve their goals, even if they are not directly related to the project goal. So the next best strategy here is to set up a meeting one-on-one, -on -one, ideally in person, not online, and talk this problem through. And believe me, it's much easier to support a conflict on a distance or through the emails because you don't see the opponent. But when you sit in the room with a person who is willing to resolve this conflict, it's really difficult to be aggressive and assertive and demand something. So this way you will force them to discuss an agreement and the code of conduct between you so that you work in a more collaborative way. But in the real world you need to understand that not all people are that good and they may agree to some code of conduct uh, to collaborate with you. 
but in the long run you need to look for integrity in their action. So if your discussion one-on-one -on -one went well, but the next day in their emails and other communication they continue to be aggressive and assertive, that's bad integrity. For sure, you can give it another try and discuss what's going on and why don't they keep to the agreements. But in any case, if you see it for second time or the third time, you need to switch strategies and become more assertive from your side. Tip number three, identify what's in it for them. So I already mentioned it. You, you see that stakeholders work in your company and it feels like you are on the same side and you should strive towards the project's objective together. But in the real world you need to understand that these people don't owe you anything. They have some personal goals and personal agendas. So when you know their goals and agendas, you can help them to achieve those goals. And in return, maybe, just maybe, they will help you to reach the project objectives or at least they won't impede your progress. Likewise, when you know what they want to achieve, it's easier for you to show them that you can impede their work towards that goal. Because most probably their goals are not aligned with the project goals and they do something extra. Project owners and your boss should be in most cases on your side in this case. And by this moment I think you have already a feeling that it shouldn't be this way. It's not a professional behavior to try to leverage each other in such a way. And I totally agree with you, it's internal politics. But in the real world you cannot avoid it. It's present in any company. And you can try to put a blind eye on it, but it won't help you to get your project to the successful end. So from time to time you will have to get into this internal politics, but it's another topic for another video. Tip number four invest in personal relationships. First of all, there is a general misconception that your project owners, that your boss and the other authoritative stakeholders with higher titles, that they are good leaders by default. And in real life it's not true. So whenever you face a difficult stakeholder, in most cases this person lacks leadership skills. Second, from my practical experience I noticed that whenever stakeholders meet you in person and you spend some time out of the office together, you have a stronger bond. Your relationships become completely different. They start to treat you as a person. They start to understand your needs and wants and all the difficulties and challenges that you face on the project. That's why I recommend that you invest some time into building personal relationships with all stakeholders related to your project. And I want you to understand that you will work in one company for several years, so it's worthwhile investing your time into internal stakeholders because you will work on different projects with them. And it shouldn't be complicated. You can go with this stakeholder for a lunch or a coffee break and do what normal people do. Just talk about something outside of the work. Another mistake that a lot of project managers do is that they engage stakeholders when they need them, not on a continuous basis. And as you understand, when you ask them on the spot to help you, they might be interested in something else. They might have different priorities from your project. Therefore, they will not help you right here, right now. So the best way to keep them engaged is to provide some responsibilities to them, something that won't take a lot of time but will continuously require them to participate with the project team's work. Likewise, on a regular basis you may ask for their advice or verification of your approaches or ideas. On the other hand, during the periods of time when you don't need their participation, you may try to help them to do their work, maybe by freeing up some space, providing them some free resources from your project, or maybe just helping with advice from project management, productivity or leadership. And in general, you should always show them that you understand their pain points. And usually authoritative stakeholders and subject matter experts have one big pain point. It's a lack of time and overwhelm. If you enjoyed this video so far, give it a like. And next I'm going to share some truth from trenches and things that you can do if nothing works and these stakeholders make your life intolerable. As you understand, these techniques are not some kind of magic. 
and in the real world you will face bad managers and bad leaders that you won't be able to do anything about. And it's an ethical crossroad for a project manager. You can stay or you can leave. You see, from one side it's a bad practice to leave whenever you face a challenge or whenever you face a person who makes your life harder. On each and every project you will have at least one person who will make your life difficult. So should you leave the project or your profession whenever you feel discomfort? I believe that's a wrong practice. At the very least, you need to get the project to the end and then you can leave. So sometimes you need to stay in the company and in the project just to make the environment better. Otherwise, no one will do it and everything will fall apart. But sometimes enough is enough and the environment of the project is so toxic that you can't tolerate it anymore. In this case, yes, you can make a decision to leave and leave immediately. So how can you know whether you should leave or stay? My best advice here is to consider whether you are getting any practical and relevant experience from this toxic environment. If yes, stay for a bit, maybe for the next few months or a year. If no, leave at once. Find a better environment that teaches you how to manage people, projects and stakeholders. Remember that project management is not a sprint, it's a marathon that you will do for many years. So you should protect your mental health from these toxic people. All right, it's the start of the new year and if your goal is to become a great project manager in 2022, a project manager who knows how to manage difficult stakeholders, who knows how to be a great leader, how to finish the projects on time and within budget, then my practical project management course is for you. It teaches you everything that you need to know to become a great project manager. And about within a month you can get through the course and start applying these practical skills to your projects and your project teams. So get the course today, the link is in the description. I hope to see you on the inside. See you later, bye bye.